Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new Disney in Detail travel day. I am heading to Walt Disney World for the festive season. It's actually right at the end of November. So I'm going the first two weeks of December, not for actual Christmas because it's very, very busy at that time of year. And actually my annual pass is blocked out for Christmas. So I like to experience the festivities without actually being there at the busiest time. I'm gonna be going to Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party in the Magic Kingdom. I'll be doing the new Jollywood Nights event in Hollywood Studios, as well as checking out all of the Christmas decorations around the parks around the resorts I'm going for a couple of weeks this time a little bit longer so there's gonna be loads of vlogs coming your way I'm really excited to share the festive season at Disney World with you guys I normally would go by coach or I have done the last few times because it's usually significantly cheaper however this time it was kind of the same price and when I looked at it although the train is a little bit more annoying because I have to get on and off because I do have to change just once actually but I do have luggage so that can be a little bit annoying but with the coach it does take a lot longer to get there so with the timings I just thought I will go for the train so everyone keep everything crossed but it's nice and quiet I can get my suitcase into the luggage rack and get a seat without too much trouble because that's the only problem with the train it can be them being super busy that has been my experience a lot of the time so hopefully that's going to be good Kate has just dropped me off so it's a real shame she couldn't come she really wanted to come on this trip actually Kate really wanted to come Lisa really wanted to come pretty much everybody did but no one has got any annual leave left from work at this time of year most people have used up their annual leave and they got a little bit of a Christmas but that's it so I'm solo on this one however I will be back early next year and I do have a travel buddy for that trip it's somebody that I know you guys are going to be very excited to see again I'm staying up at Gatwick this evening at the Premier Inn the Gatwick hotels have been really expensive recently or I say recently in the last couple of years since the pandemic but I did manage to get the Premier Inn that's actually at the terminal this time which makes it a lot easier for in the morning when you just have to go across to check in and everything so I'm glad I got that one I don't have to get any buses or anything like that and then I will be heading off to Orlando tomorrow I'm so excited I really can't wait and because it's gonna be the Christmas season it just adds another level of excitement with all the decorations I'm really excited to see everything I'm in some very unforgiving lighting here. I'm at Reading Station now, just on the first leg of the journey. It was delayed, there was a signal problem or something, so we were sat there for like 20 minutes, so I've missed my connection up to Gatwick. So I'm just getting a little Starbucks here while I wait, because I need to wait about 40 minutes extra to get on the next train. Hopefully it won't be too packed. I've managed to have a comfortable journey this far, so the next bit is the shorter part. So even if I have to stand or something, it's not the end of the world, but hopefully I'll be able to get a seat. made it to South Terminal. I just need to grab a couple of things from Boots and from m and I'm going to do that now and then get on the monorail that goes across to North Terminal because that's where my hotel is. And you see Gatwick have got their nice Christmas tree here. So I'm already feeling festive, haven't even got to Disney yet. There goes the monorail. It's very difficult to vlog with all the cases and everything I'm carrying so I thought I'd just show you as you get out of the lift so you just get off the monorail go down in the lift and the Premier Inn I'm staying in is this one here so this is Premier Inn North Terminal make sure you get the right one because there are a few different ones around Gatwick just checked in on the little machines here that's the easiest way to do it and I'm actually not going to be eating in the restaurant tonight because I've got myself something from M&S just to have in the room because honestly I'm kind of tired and I can't really be bothered to go and have a proper dinner but they do have a Costa here as well and the restaurant is just behind it over there so I just thought I'd show you that um, so there's a bar just to the right you can see and then the time restaurant so that's where you go for your breakfast in the morning as well just past the Costa just arrived and in true Premier in style it is extremely purple in here <laughs> i'm really not sure whether you can see me properly i've tried to put on a different light i've still got the purple going on back here but hopefully you guys can see me okay i've just been sorting my stuff out for the morning i'm gonna have quite an early start because if you guys watched my last trip was it the september one i think it was the september one 
yes the most recent one last time i was here at gatwick and there was an absolutely awful queue at bag drop i don't think that will happen again it was just their systems are down i think that's kind of a one-off but i'm a little bit on edge after that happening last time i ended up rushing through security rushing to the plane i was worried i wasn't even going to make it so i'm going to go a little bit earlier than i need to i want to be able to get some breakfast and a coffee and stuff without feeling rushed so i've just been getting all of my stuff laid out for the morning and just getting myself ready i just had a sandwich from mms in the and I didn't bother going down to get any dinner. I wasn't feeling that hungry and I figured it would just save time to eat something here in the room. And I need to fix a couple of nails. One of them broke when I was carrying the suitcase, which was very annoying. I only did them a couple of nights ago, so I need to fix that. And then I'm gonna head to bed. And I've also just been reflecting on the fact that this is the big 30th trip. Now, I wish that referred to my birthday. I'm 10 years too late for that. This is actually my 30th trip to Walt Disney World. So I've been 30 times since 2002 so 21 years i really can't believe that i used to go like every other year then it sort of went to every year and since i've had the channel i obviously go a lot more often but i can't believe this is my 30th trip that's so crazy i feel so lucky and grateful to be able to go as often as i do and i really genuinely do feel that that is not something i ever thought that i would get to do if someone would have told me 10 years ago that i would be going to disney world this often and i would be getting to do this I just wouldn't have believed it. I would honestly think no way, no way is that possible. And I just wanna say a huge thank you to you guys for watching my videos because I wouldn't be here doing this if it wasn't for you guys watching and liking, commenting, subscribing. Thank you so much to all of you for watching these videos and sharing in these trips with me, both here on YouTube and over on Instagram as well. I love going with friends and family members, but I do a lot of these trips solo and I never feel like I am on the trip solo, purely because when I'm vlogging, I feel like I am bringing you guys along with with me i know that sounds very weird it's hard to explain but when i am vlogging it does feel like you are all there because i'm talking to you as i'm going around the parks and also seeing you guys in the parks in person i see so many people when i'm on these trips i get to meet you have a chat with you and i just wanted to say a huge thank you to you guys on this 30th trip to Walt disney world i can't believe it and i'm so glad it is a christmas trip i cannot wait to get over there and just immerse myself in the disney christmas feeling there is nothing like it if you've been to disney world during the festive season the music the decorations just the general feel of the place it is one of the best times to be there so i'm going to fix these couple of nails get myself into bed get some sleep ready for an early start in the morning Good morning everyone, it is travel day to Orlando today. I'm so excited, I've just packed up my cases behind me somewhere here, yes, they are all ready to go. Unfortunately, I didn't sleep too well. I did have a reasonable amount when I first went to sleep, but I woke up at three, four, five, and then eventually six. Um, my alarm went and I was already kind of awake by then. I always do it. I worry about oversleeping when I'm on a solo trip. If there's someone else here, I always think, well, they'll also set an alarm, they'll wake up as well. But when it's just me and I have to wake up and not be late, I do just keep waking because I'm so worried about it. But anyway, I did manage to get some sleep before then. So at least that was something. I'm going over to the airport a little bit earlier this time. Some of you may remember on the last trip, I had that absolute disaster with the queue for BA. The systems were down. Now, to be fair, that was an unusual circumstance, but I felt like I was rushing to even get to the plane and I don't want that again. That was really, really stressful. So I'm going a little bit earlier just in case there is any kind of issue. So hopefully there'll be plenty of time to have breakfast, get coffee and all of that when I get through. I don't know how much I'll be able to vlog between now and getting to the check-in desk because it is quite difficult with two suitcases, but I'm gonna do my best. So once you've come across on the monorail, you then want to turn left and all the way to the end of this building. And that's where you'll find the check-in for British Airways. If you've been going to Orlando for a long time, it's where Virgin Atlantic used to be. They used to have the whole of the end of this building, but now it's BA. If you're flying with Virgin, you're gonna want the North Terminal for your departure. And Norwegian have a little desk over here on the left. I do miss Norwegian flights to Orlando. They were very cheap. I'm sad that they no longer fly there. I'm already hopeful because this looks a lot less chaotic than it did the last time. I think we're good to go. Fingers crossed we can just do bag drop here on the right hand side and it's all automated machines. Okay, I think it's boarding pass that we scan. Then passport. Then it tells you to put your bag on. Please don't be over. 21.8. 
and then you put the tag on and then it's off. Well, to say that was easier than last time would be an understatement. It took seconds, as you saw, just checking in the bag. And um, they print you out a little receipt thing. That's what they usually would stick on the back of your passport. That's your luggage collection thing, just in case there's any problems with lost luggage. So keep that little receipt thing that prints out at the end, and then you're good to go. So it's nice and easy. Security looks quiet, which is good too. I won't be able to film in here, so I will see you on the other side. Okay, that was all done super easy, and now I can be let loose in the Juicy Free and for coffee, most importantly. Need to go and get that, I haven't had one yet today. I do normally try and find the perfume I wear and have a little squirt of it, because I didn't bring it through with me, because obviously liquid, so let's see if we can find it. And I should just mention, I got a Kylie lip kit from Kate for my birthday. There's one shade called Victoria and she got me that and it stays on like absolute crazy. It's really, really good. So if you're looking for lipstick that stays on, Kylie lip kits, I can highly recommend. Oh, Mr. Bones is festive today. That's as festive as he gets. He's got a bauble in his top pocket. I can't find the Ralph Lauren romance. Perhaps I'll just have a go on the old CK one for old time's sake. Okay, just had a little spray of that. That really takes me back. That's so funny. Did anyone else used to use that when they were a teenager? Please let me know in the comments that it wasn't just me. And I've got to get a shot of the sparkly floor for Becky. She loves it. I know she'll be watching. I think I'm gonna head upstairs for a Weatherspoons breakfast. You can't really beat a Weatherspoons breakfast. They're not super expensive. I mean, it will be airport prices, but hopefully not too horrifying. And I've got plenty of time, so my gate won't be up yet. Having just said that, there is this place, Vagabond Kitchen, which used to be Jamie's Diner, and it looks a lot quieter. I wonder what they have. Yeah, they do have classic breakfast. Maybe I'll just go here. It looks a little less chaotic than Weatherspoons. Okay, I'm already seated, and they had a table service section where they have, like, someone come up and take your order. But you can also sit down at this end, and they have a QR code where you can order and pay. So I'll just do that. It's a lot easier. And I think classic breakfast is going to have to be the way to go. So I'm all ordered. There was a service charge as well, and then it also asked you to tip, so I don't know what's going on there, but anyway, that was that. And while I've been sat here, I'm just checking my emails, and I've just had a boarding pass sent through to me from Mia's Connect. So I'm using Mia's Connect this time just to show you guys that service from Terminal C, because I've only ever used it from Terminal A and B, and um, just to let you know that, so they did email me a boarding pass this morning, so by the time I get there, I will have that ready to go on my phone. Okay, here is my breakfast and coffee. I like to fill up because I don't eat on the plane. So I eat breakfast basically and then I just have a quick sandwich on the plane. This looks really, really good. I have to say though, this is the tiniest amount of beans in the entire world for how much this breakfast cost. I'm on the move again. It's very easy when you're sat there with your coffee to forget how much time you've got. I always seem to have hours to wait when I'm coming home, like when I'm at Orlando Airport, but when I'm here, I don't have very long and then it's time to board. So I'm gonna head to Boots. There's a couple of bits I couldn't get last night. So I'll see what they have here. And I also ought to nip to the restrooms because I got egg on my top while I was in having my breakfast. I'd love to say it's all glamorous here, but it's not. It's gate time and today we are 32. Here we are, time to go get the bags and you get your bags first here in Terminal C. Okay, here we are and I am gonna have to get a Starbucks before I go and find the Mia's desk. I've not had a coffee since breakfast this morning and I'm in desperate need. So I'm just gonna grab this. Got a nice colored sky out there. You can see outside the windows. But I'm gonna show you guys exactly where you need to go to get your Mia's Connect service. Okay, I've got the necessary fuel to get me through in the next couple of hours getting myself over to the hotel. And I didn't film much on the flight, you'll have noticed. There really isn't anything to film, especially not when I'm by myself. I've said that before, but there's no conversation 
conversation going on there's just me sitting there watching movies or drinking cups of tea or listening to music but that is pretty much it there really isn't anything to show it was a very full flight and obviously on flights they actually do announce now you need to be careful about filming other people so I just really can't vlog an awful lot but I watched three movies I watched Beetlejuice The Holiday and Sense and Sensibility so all old films for people who like that kind of detail and actually with BA I think their film selection is much better than with Virgin of late they have a lot of older films they have like a 90s and an 80s section old favorites classics like they have so much stuff um, you could honestly watch films like literally from when you take off until when you land so I love BA's in-flight entertainment I did briefly show that and they have games and stuff as well I noticed a lot of people were playing the games and it was a very uneventful easy flight no sort of major turbulence or anything like that I don't feel super tired I didn't have the best night's sleep last night so I am starting to kind of get into that area of feeling a bit tired but I feel surprisingly good and I have to say coming into this terminal rather than the old A and B terminals is so much better that is just my honest opinion just to let you know you tend to wait longer for your bags because you collect your bags first here and I've noticed it does take longer in this terminal than over A and B but immigration never has a queue here so you grab your bags and then just go straight through immigration and then you're out it just feels a little bit less kind of stressful to me that immigration queue in terminal A and B if there's several flights that come in at the same time can be horrible I've waited in that queue for like two hours before it's hot and you just stood there it's really not great so I do prefer coming into terminal and we'll see I have to say so I'm just gonna have this coffee and then I'm gonna go and get my Mia's transfer like I said I'll show you exactly where you need to go for that I don't know because I've never done it before so we will learn together but I think it's very easy they sent me an email this morning and I also had a text when I landed as well I'm um, just confirming my pickup so I'll just quickly have this and then we'll head off to All Star Sports and just to point out, I love their Christmas decorations on the baggage carousel. There's some baubles over there and then there's giant Christmas lights on this one. I did not think this all the way through trying to carry my coffee, the vlogging camera and my suitcases. So I currently have the vlogging camera in the front pocket of my cabin case and I'm hoping that if I wheel this along, you guys are going to be able to see which direction we're going in. And I'm hoping you can still hear me. I'm trying not to shout like an absolute crazy person, but I think this is kind of working. Immigration is over there, and we're going to go this way. And you can see ahead on that signage, it says ground transportation level one with an arrow to the right. That is where we're going. Hope you guys are doing okay there and not getting too travel sick since you're rolling along. Pleased with this idea as long as you can actually hear me. I've got no idea whether this will pick up. I'm hoping it does. Ah, okay, so level one. Oh, we need to do an about turn and go in these lifts. Sorry, a bit of a bump there. Straighten you guys back up. Floor one. Well, now we're going to be rolling on carpet. This will be interesting. And right in front of me here, I can see Mia's Connect driven by sunshine. Yeah, I can pick you back up now so hopefully you guys enjoyed that little ride across the airport so yeah this is Mears Connect driven by Sunshine because Sunshine Flyer and Mears Connect have now merged so there is no longer two different services it's just one and the pricing is $16 for an adult and $13 for a child and you can either do one way or return service and you can book that online and you basically just check in at the desk over there which I will do in a second once I finish this coffee and this is definitely an ex Disney Cruise Line bus I've made it and look at the tree here in the lobby. I love all the Christmas decorations and all the resorts. So I'm going to go and get checked in and then I will catch up with you guys when I get to the room. I'm all checked in and I also have an Erin Condren package which I got delivered here which I'm kind of balancing. I'm not sure if this is going to work but let's hope that it does. And just stepping outside here you can see the pool in the surfs up area and this is the section that I'm in which is really nice because it's close to the main building. This is me, 1263 and just to show you where I'm located Hated. You can see here is the pool and this is the main building so I'm super close which is really good. 
and here is what the all-star rooms look like i'm going to get this luggage inside and then i'll just show you this properly as you can see this is currently set up as a table and chairs but this is actually the pull down bed so if you want to use this bed you just move the chairs away and it just pulls down the bedding is already on there obviously if there's just yourself or there's just two of you and you're sharing the bed then you can leave it like this the whole time like i will and then you've always got somewhere to sit there always seems to be the craziest amount of pillows but remember those are pillows for both beds then as you walk into the bathroom you have this little wardrobe area on the left hand side there is a hairdryer in the room just in here i know a lot of people ask about hair dryers they do have them then you have this kind of vanity unit with the sink and a very tired looking traveler in the mirror there and just to the left you've got your iron and some more storage space the ironing board is just there and just round to the right you've then got your shower over the tub and obviously the toilet and they do have shower screens and not curtains which make me very happy i do not like shower curtains then here you've got some drawers and I think in here is, yep, yeah, the safe is in there. And a nice big TV. And just over here, you have this little unit where there's an ice bucket and some cups. You then have a coffee maker and some coffee and tea bags and stuff there. Usually this stuff used to be in this drawer, but this is just empty now. And then there's also a fridge down here as well. One thing I would recommend you do is take a photo of your room number just in case you forget it you can easily just refer back to it because i have done that a lot of times i'm on the move again i'm just heading to the food court to see if there's anything there that i like otherwise i'll grab something on uber eats okay let's go see what they have in here and it really doesn't look that busy considering it's evening i mean it's like 8 p.m now so i guess a lot of people may have already eaten dinner or they're still in the park but it's not busy in here at all they've got create your own entree which looks like they have chicken, shrimp, salmon, or beef. And then you have sides like mashed potatoes, um, garlic green beans, brown rice, things like that. And a vegan meatloaf as well they did have there. And over here they have burgers, grilled chicken sandwich, chili, cheese, or beef hot dog, and a pulled pork sandwich. They also have macaroni cheese, of meatballs chicken and parmesan pasta meatball sub and they do have pizza as well okay I ended up going for the cheese pizza i also got some onion rings i'm super hungry so i felt like i needed both and a powerade and the total came to 2072 i've had this pizza before it's really nice this is a huge huge slice of pizza as well it's really big so i'm gonna have this and um, then head back over to the room to go to bed i'm back and definitely ready for bed now just to let you know about the food that i had over in the food court there the pizza was not as good as i remembered it last time so i did have that pizza it may have been all-star movies to be fair but i would have thought it would all be really similar it wasn't quite as nice as i remembered but it was good so it was fine the onion rings however were the best onion rings i've had in a really long time so they exceeded expectations and i'm going to be joining this travel day up with my first day tomorrow in the magic kingdom so today we'll roll right into magic kingdom tomorrow so although i'll be getting some sleep it will just be a brief transition for you guys and then it will be morning it was so nice to meet so many of you guys today at gatwick on the plane and when i landed at orlando as well so a huge thank you to everybody who came up to say hi i had some really nice chats with you and when i'm on my own on solo trips it's really nice to have lots of chats and sometimes i have really long chats with you which i love so thank you to everyone that i chatted with today you're all lovely i'll be doing lots of restaurants on this trip that i either haven't done before or i haven't done them in a really long time and haven't shown them in the vlogs tomorrow evening i'm going to be eating at whispering canyon cafe i did recently show breakfast there but i haven't shown dinner I don't think for years and years not that i recall anyway so i'll be doing that tomorrow and just taking in the magic kingdom atmosphere but tomorrow will just be some general wandering taking in the atmosphere i think it's going to be a little cold tomorrow it's actually quite cold now it seems weird walking around in a jacket because the last few trips have been really hot i must admit i do prefer it when it's a bit cooler so i'm happy that it's going to be cooler tomorrow i think over the weekend though it will then be getting warmer again one thing i will say if you're traveling at this time of year so end of november into december 
December and January as well. And actually February, to be honest, can be quite mixed. It can be hot one day and then cold the next to the point where you need like a jacket and then the next minute it's very hot. So you kind of need to pack for all different types of weather because it can be quite changeable, but I'm definitely happy when it's a bit cooler. I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. If you are, please do go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That helps other people to find it. I'm off to bed now, but I will see you bright and early in the morning for Magic Kingdom. Good morning everyone, it is time for the parks. It is 7 a.m. I did wake up quite early this morning, so I've got myself ready to go nice and early. I'm off to the Magic Kingdom today, as so many people do on their first day of their trip. It's just a must do for your first day at Disney. For my outfit today, I have these ears from Magic Maker Ears, which I am completely obsessed with these. They're a new pair that I have. I absolutely love them. I'll link them below, and I've got a discount code you can use as well. And I have this dress on, which is from Pour Moi. This is the dress, you know, the one I've got in loads of different colors and all the polka dot colors but this is like a floral one and i do have a jacket over the top because it is chilly today and i meant to mention you may have noticed last night when i opened the door to the room that i used a key card they actually gave that to me at check-in automatically they didn't ask to see my magic bands which were in my suitcase anyway but they just gave me a key card and i haven't had one for a while normally they ask to see your magic band and kind of tap that to set it up for opening the door so i don't know i don't know if that's a new thing but they just automatically gave me that card to open the door and the sun is still kind of rising here, so obviously nobody in the pool yet. I would imagine that would be pretty cold today, right now anyway. Let's see if there's much activity in here. No, it seems fairly quiet. It is pretty early. I don't think everyone heads off to the parks early. I must admit, later in the trip I probably won't. It's only because I am up and awake because I only flew in yesterday. <laughs> and the bus stops are at the front of the resort and they go all the way along. So Magic Kingdom is first and then the other parks all lead on from there. Magic Kingdom is usually the busiest line and it's not too bad today. You can also normally tell whether or not bus has just been by how many people are in line. So I'm guessing one has just been. They're very frequent though, especially in the mornings. So I'm off the bus just walking towards security and the sun is looking beautiful on the ferries as they come in. Love this, I love a morning in the Magic Kingdom. And I always give you this tip, but don't forget to take your umbrella out of your bag and then as you go through the security scanner, hold it right out in front of you and then nine times out of 10, you won't get stopped for a check. If you have an umbrella in your bag, then your bag will get checked most likely if you don't take it out first. And sunglasses cases can also cause the same problem, like those hard cases, take those out as well. I'm a little shocked, it's park opening right now and there are no crowds. I don't know why, I was expecting long lines. Maybe it's because I've been watching on Instagram and seeing Thanksgiving week last week, which was super busy, I don't know. But this definitely suits me. Here is our first look at the Christmas decorations. I can't wait to get inside and see the Magic Kingdom decorated for Christmas. It's the best time of the year for decorations. Very closely followed by Halloween, but you just can't beat Christmas. And it is a party night tonight. I personally won't be going to the party. I'm doing it in a few days, but the Magic Kingdom will close at six on a party night. Here we go. This looks beautiful. I love the tree and I love the soldiers, the little soldiers here by the trees. We'll go and take a closer look. I'm smelling that kind of cinnamon smell. Oh my gosh, I love it. And I think the little opening ceremony is happening down by the castle. I really can't believe how quiet it is. This is amazing. Me too, Minnie. Look at all the red flowers as well. It all just looks beautiful. I'd forgotten how amazing it is at Christmas. As much as I love Halloween, officially, Christmas in the Magic Kingdom is the best. This is amazing. Another thing I absolutely love doing, whenever I get to a park in the morning and I'm getting off the bus or whatever transportation I've taken, especially in the Magic Kingdom, is hearing people walking towards the park. You can tell a lot of people either haven't been before or they haven't been for a long time. And there was a little girl as I was getting off the bus and the first thing, she literally stepped off the bus and she was like, where's the castle? It was so cute, I love it. So I do love that, especially when I'm here solo so I can kind of hear everything that's going on around me, I love it. I am genuinely shocked at how uncrowded it feels. I was expecting big crowds at the 
front gate there. I was expecting as we were walking down it to be completely jammed here on Main Street, but it's really not. And I'm hoping that also means the coffee line won't be long. I don't think it is. There is like no line and it's first thing in the morning in the Magic Kingdom. What is happening? Got my favorite spot here on the tables out the front of Plaza Restaurant. Got my coffee and it's winter, so they have the chestnut praline latte, which is my absolute favorite. I'll probably have this most days, I'll be honest. I absolutely love it. We don't have it in the UK, so I have to make the most of it while I'm here. And you can see my view in the background. I actually was facing what you guys are seeing here, but I just turned around so that you can see it. And I don't really have a plan of action as such for today. I know I am going to be getting a Nutella fruit waffle for breakfast because it's my favourite breakfast in the Magic Kingdom, other than some table service places, but I love getting that. So I'm going to go and get that and then just have a wander, take a look at all the decorations everywhere and ride some attractions. It's very quiet. So it's going to be interesting to see whether this is the same as the Halloween party days when it's really quiet during the day and then gets busy later. So we'll see how that pans out. And I'm over by the castle now. I thought I would just show you guys a bit of a behind the scenes of how I take my own photos when I'm on a trip by myself. I will sometimes ask other people, but I actually find it more successful if I just do it myself. So as you can see here on this little lamppost pillar, I've got my phone set up and I put it on a timer. Sometimes I put the phone on top of a trash can, to be honest, those are really good. They're dotted around the hub. So if you stand it on a tripod on top of there, obviously at this time I've got it on the pillar, but you can take loads of different angles and just use the timer. Sometimes I turn it around in selfie mode, like I have here. Other times I kind of set it up and look to see what the view looks like and then kind of nip around and take the photo. So I just thought I would show you that little behind the scenes. Okay, photos are all done. And as you can see, it's very quiet around here. So this is a good time to be taking pictures in the morning. This is such a nice relaxed start to this trip. It's so much quieter than I thought it was gonna be. I've been able to get pictures and because it's not warm, you can take photos a lot more easily than you can when it's hot. When you end up a horrible sweaty mess, which often happens. Although I have to say, it's starting to warm up. Now the sun's come up. I don't think I'm gonna need this jacket for a lot longer. Right now I think my fruit waffle is calling. This is such a good breakfast option in the Magic Kingdom and it's a little bit of a hidden gem if you don't already know about it. So it's here at Sleepy Hollow in Liberty Square, just as you've come over the bridge. And this is it here, fresh fruit waffle sandwich. Oh, it's so good and it's very shareable. Obviously I'm on my own, so I'm gonna to have to uh, finish it myself, but I'll do my best. Okay, here it is, the fruit Nutella waffle. It's got really big pieces of banana in it today. And as you get closer to the middle of eating this, where the fruit and the Nutella is like right in the middle of it, it goes like soggy underneath. I know some people hate that. That's actually the best part, if you ask me, where it's like really soaked in the Nutella. It's really good. But I do love the waffle where it's crispy around the edges. It's just so nice. In terms of like grab and go kind of breakfast in the Magic Kingdom, I think this is the best. Mm, so good. 10 out of 10. A fruit waffle is checked off of today's list and I think it's only appropriate that we should go to the Christmas store. And as we walk in, they have some Hanukkah stuff here. They have a lounge fly bag, that's very cute. I love Minnie and Mickey peeking out over the top. I like this green one, it's like a turquoisey green. Jolly holiday days to you. These are cute too. Can you imagine though trying to take these home to the UK? I just wouldn't even risk it. I'm sure you could package it well, but I still would be worried about that breaking. And in this store, you can get your ornaments personalized and it's $5 per word additional. So you can ask when you go and pay if you wanna get your ornament personalized. I guess maybe you could put the year on it if you get a different one every year. That would be quite nice to have the year engraved. This one's very cute with Chip and Dale on the candy cane. I really like that one actually. And they have Walt here. This is the new statue that is about to be unveiled in Epcot on the 5th. So I will be in Epcot on the 5th of December. I'll be able to show you that statue. I'm sure there'll be a long line to go and look at it, but uh, they have the little ornament version there. And I think this might be, I don't know, I might be totally getting this wrong, but this looks like paramedic Mickey, like medical emergency Mickey. Tell me if I've got that totally wrong, but this kind of looks like a, some sort of medical thing. I don't know. And they have this Sleeping Beauty one that opens out like a pop-up book. And I think it must make sounds as well. And they have Sebastian here and Gaston being extra as per usual. These ones are very nice. There's a set of four. The camera is not doing those justice. They look a lot nicer in person. They have Haunted Mansion ones here. I think all these light up as well. I really like that one actually. This one is very beautiful. I love that. It's so heavy though. I feel like it would almost fall off the tree. That one's 
I do love it though, that may also be a contender. And on the other side it does have Mickey there with the station. I always look at this one too, like the gates as you drive into Disney World. And this is one of the Christmas spirit jerseys this year. I do like the way they have the lights around the uh, Walt Disney World text at the top there. There's a Joffrey's Christmas blend here too, Mickey Mouse very merry blend. There's a Nightmare Before Christmas spirit jersey here. They have this, which is a diffuser. That's really different. How much is this? $59.99. That is very unique though, I have to say. <laughs> this bauble plushie is really neat. That's $39.99. Time for an attraction, I think. Let's take a look at some wait times. We got the old 13 minutes at Haunted Mansion, which usually means a walk-on, so I think that might be the way forward. We've got 30 minutes at Peter Pan, that's not bad. 15 minutes over at Big Thunder Mountain. So you can see these wait times, it is now 9.31. So the park's been open since 8 a.m. On these party days, it really does tend to be a lot quieter. 45 minutes for Seven Doors Mine Train. That's really not bad for that attraction. As the day progresses, I'll keep you updated on those wait times because it'll be really interesting to see at what point in the day it starts kind of getting a bit busier. I'm gonna imagine it would be like three or four o'clock because then you'll get the party guests starting to arrive. But first thing in the morning, if you're gonna stay here till last thing at night, these parties tend to finish around midnight, 1 a.m. It would be way too long of a day for people to come in the morning. So yeah, if you're not going to the party definitely take advantage of these quieter mornings this cast member has the ghost dog oh he's so cute Thank you. <laughs> he knows a couple tricks Do you want to see? oh yeah sure he knows how to sit and he can play dead oh he is a good boy so just getting in line for haunted mansion and i've just run into terry here and yes. she has some big news hat box ghost is up i was just looking yesterday and it said the end of november today is the 30th and yeah you've just been on yes and now going right around again this is exciting when word gets out the line will get longer i think yes, so oh my gosh we're here for hat box i'm so excited oh, wow. <laughs> sounds frightfully sensitive right <laughs> Absolute treat to be in the Magic Kingdom the day that the Hatbox Ghost has arrived in the Haunted Mansion. You guys know how I feel about that attraction. I'm so excited. I'm a little bit beside myself actually. I loved it. I'm going to come back again and do it later because I did vlog it and I obviously filmed it for my stories as well. So I'll come back and experience it fully later. But how good was that? I loved it. It was so lucky. I met the lovely subscriber in line who gave me the heads up so I was ready with my camera. So thank you so much. I love you guys. You're always amazing. And I love talking to you as well. So now on our hat box ghost high, let's go and ride something else. Since we're in this area, I do want to go and have a look at Village Gifts, which is the gift shop just by Gaston's Tavern, because they do sometimes have some unique things in there, and I've not been in for a little while. So while I'm in the area, I will probably ride The Little Mermaid, and then maybe make my way around to Tomorrowland. And it looks like Enchanted Tales with Belle is open. That was actually closed for quite some time during the pandemic, and I'm not sure when it reopened, but I haven't done it for a while. It looks like it might be closed. I'll go and take a closer look, but that would explain why I haven't been in there for a while. Yeah, it's closed. I do not have the info on that one. Maybe it opens later in the day or something. Perfect, we have a five minute wait. That's what I like to see. Hello, dear my friends. You're about to go under the sea. Love that ride. Little Mermaid is my favourite Disney movie of all time, the original one. I love the new one as well, but the original is my fave, so I love doing that. And just in case you didn't know, you can meet Ariel just to the right-hand side of the ride. She's got her grotto there. On my way to Tomorrowland, I think I'm going to go via Storybook Circus here and head into Big Top Souvenirs. They've got some of the 100 anniversary items here, including the Crocs. 
Has anyone seen that you can get McDonald's Crocs now? I feel like eventually there'll be every type of Croc imaginable. And the Disney 100 Silver Tumbler is $20. That's pretty good. I think they were usually 50. They were 49.99, then they were 30, and then currently they're 20. And I think I would get annual pass discount on that. And they have this guy from the new movie, Wish. He is so chonky. I feel like Catherine would love this. Catherine, if you're watching, I'm pretty sure you would. I like this Guardians of the Galaxy AirPod case. They have both sizes. It actually looks better in this size, but the AirPods I have are this one. They've got some very nice Christmas treats here. They've got candy apples with various different Christmas designs. I like the tree one. Crispy treats and cake pops and stuff too. And they did have tables and chairs back here for a short while, but they've changed it back now and it's all merchandise. There's no seating area, which is kind of a shame because I quite liked this little sneaky seating area back here. And don't forget back here where Pete's Silly Sideshow is, is where you can come to meet characters. They have Minnie and Daisy and Goofy and Donald. Hey, it's now officially too hot for a jacket. So it's about 10.30, 10.40. I actually could have done without it for the last couple of hours. I only really needed it first thing this morning. And I think the next few days are gonna get even hotter. So we'll see what the jacket situation is, but mornings and evenings does get very cold, so you kind of do need it. And just to show you crowd levels, as you can see walking through here, really not bad at all. The wait times are still quite low. We'll check those out on the little board that's coming up in Tomorrowland. The temperature is very, very pleasant now. It's not hot like it is when it's humid in the summer months, but it's warm with the sun out, so it's lovely. Okay, let's see here. Buzz Lightyear is 25 minutes. Virtual queue for Tron is closed. I did check that, and even though it's a quiet morning, it did fill up very fast as always, but you can get another one at 1 p.m. Haunted Mansion is now 35 minutes. Word is obviously out about the Hatbox Ghost. Pirates is 10 minutes. Jungle Cruise, or Jingle Cruise, I should say, at this time of year is 65. That's always quite high. But I think it's about time we got on to the People Mover. No trip to the Magic Kingdom is complete without it. I'm still buzzing about the Hatbox Ghost, honestly. I can't believe I was here today, the first day that the Hatbox Ghost has been unveiled. You would think he's joining, he's the thousandth one, but he's not. Greetings, intergalactic travelers. Welcome aboard the People Mover, presented by Enterprise. I'm Morak 5, your guide aboard this highway in the sky. For your safety, if you have wings, jetpacks, or gravity polarizers, please do not take flight while on board. Thank you. Don't worry, your express train keeps on rolling through the future, right by two of my favorite spots. And, and you know I'm going again. I got car. such an early start Thank this morning, you. it's still pretty early in the day, and so I've got plenty of time to ride twice. The doors. Like progress itself, this theater never stops. Whether you have one eye or nine, take the time to see this show. And Chip and Dale are meeting and greeting back there. That's right way at the back of Tomorrowland, so don't miss them. I think I've been sufficiently moved after three times around. Someone did ask me yesterday if I'm planning on doing anything special because this is my 30th trip to Disney World. And while I was on the People Mover, I was thinking one thing I could do is attempt to ride the People Mover 30 times. But then I was thinking how long that would take. I'm pretty sure that would take many hours. I need to do the math, but here's one idea. Sounds like we have a stage show going on as I approach the hub here. I'm gonna go straight across and head towards Adventureland. I wanna maybe get a little snack and I'm gonna pass the cheese Cheeseburger, spring rolls, and also the pot stickers. So we'll see what happens. Perfect timing, it was all behind the tree. Sorry about that. They no longer do them. They still have the I Love You float, which I can highly recommend, and some other floats, but they don't have the pot stickers. Good job I've got an Ohana reservation late at this trip. I'm in a snack quandary now because I have my heart set on the pot stickers. Don't think I have ever seen Aloha Isle. What time is it? It is 11.40, so it's getting on for the middle of the day. There is nobody here. This is usually really busy. I know it's a little bit cold, but it's definitely hot enough for Dole Whip. Okay, I'm gonna ride Pirates since I'm now in the area, but I think I'm just gonna grab a drink at Tortuga Tavern first of all. I do love this little spot for a break. It's one of my favorites. I did get a water, but I also had to get the pear slushy. I love this from Tortuga Tavern. And also on the menu here, they had a banana, Nutella, and peanut butter sandwich, which sounded kind of crazy. I don't know how I feel about that. I maybe would eat that on a waffle, but I don't know how I feel about it in a sandwich. 
trains going by. Once I've had this and ridden pirates, I might head over to Golden Oak Outpost behind me and see if they've got anything. There might be a good snack there because they often have nice stuff there. It's over here at Golden Oak Outpost now and they have loaded chicken strips topped with cheese sauce, bacon, green onions served with french fries. I think I need to get that. That sounds really good. This came to a total of 12.56, including tax. I've come in here to Pecos Bill to eat them just because it was easier to find a table just right across the way. This is a nice little seating area inside here at Pecos Bill, so you can bring food in here from across the way at the Golden Oak Outpost. Let's just have a look at the progress here of the Splash Mountain refurbishment. And you can see the little tower over there that says Tiana's Foods and they have little um, posters all along with the construction walls here too. Some work going on there, you can see right this minute. And lots of scaffold. I'm very excited to see what this is like when it reopens. Those chicken strips were really good, but I did get full towards the end and I didn't actually finish them. They had fries underneath as well, so it was very filling. But really, really good. You know I love a Disney chicken strip and with the melted cheese on top, next level and bacon. It was very, very good. I think I'm going to walk towards the pin store. I really want to see if they have a Hatbox Ghost pin or anything Hatbox Ghost related. I feel like because I was in the park today on the day that the Hatbox Ghost made his debut, but I need to get some kind of souvenir to remind me of the day. Most of the wait times are still really low other than Peter Pan and Seven Doors Mine Train of course they're always high and Jungle Cruise. Other than that the highest is Haunted Mansion but that's no surprise with a new ghost in town. If I can't find a pin in here I might go over to Memento Mori to see if they have anything. I'm actually not seeing many Haunted Mansion ones at all. They do have this Leota one but yeah I'm not seeing any Hatbox Ghost. Nope, there's nothing there, so let's press on to Memento Mori and just see whether they have anything. It might be a little bit too early for the Hatbox merchandise, he only made his debut today. Maybe I'm a bit too keen. Do you know what I haven't done for the longest time, literally years, is the Hall of Presidents. Maybe I'll do that today, I don't think I can show you the actual show, I'm not allowed to film. But I'll be able to kind of show you inside and then I can tell you what it's like afterwards. I do really miss the little Muppet show that used to take place in these windows as well. Does anybody remember that? It wasn't for that long. So I'll just give you a little look what it looks like inside the building. This is a really big room actually and they have a lot of benches dotted around so maybe if you're ever looking to get out of the heat or just rest your legs you could pop in here. You don't have to see the show. And they have lots of portraits around as well. I did just ask the cast member and it is a little while until the next show so I'm not going to do that right now. I've already showed you the bit that I can show you. This is what I wanted. I've got to get this today haven't I? And they do have some Haunted Mansion items from the new movie. They have a hat here and a mug. The mug does have the Hatbox Ghost on and so does this shirt as well. There was actually somebody else in there asking the same question as I did about the Hatbox Ghost. So I'm surprised they haven't got a whole bunch of merchandise ready to go today. I feel like they could have made a killing, pardon the pun. And it's starting to get a little busier. This area is always the busiest, but you can see now more crowds are coming into the park, but definitely getting here early was a good call. I do just have to go and do Philhar Magic though, because that's kind of become like the people mover. No trip to the Magic Kingdom is complete without it for me. I absolutely love this show so much. I can highly recommend it if you've never done it. Or if like me, you've done it a million times, I still highly recommend doing it some more. I love Philhar Magic so much. And while I was in there, I was just remembering my really early trips. And one thing that always makes me think of those trips is Philhar Magic, especially the Aladdin scene. I don't know why, but it really takes me back to those early Disney trips. I love it so much. And the Coco scene. It's worth seeing it just for the Aladdin part and the Coco part, in my opinion. And I'll just give you a close up here of some of the decorations on the castle. Can't wait to see the decorations and everything at night and during the party. It's always such a nice atmosphere, so I'll be doing that in a few days' time. Right now I'm going to head over to Main Street, go to the Emporium, and we can look at some of the Christmas merchandise items in there. And I also have a little hidden gem to show you. There's a shop that I didn't even know was there for the longest time, so stay tuned and I'm going to show you that as well. Right now it's around 1.30, maybe it's 2 o'clock, I'm not sure. Now would be a good time to get photos as well. There's a lot of photo pass photographers with no line. First thing in the morning is one of the worst times, because as people come in, they go straight for a photo. I love this view down Main Street when you have the Christmas tree. It's so beautiful. Just as we walk in here, they've got a whole section for the new movie, Wish. These ears are very cute. They also have a spirit jersey, which is very sparkly. Oh, look at the back. It says, I'm a star on the back. And they also have a smaller version of the little star plushie. 
<laughs> I love that. I do absolutely love the Winnie the Pooh cuddly cushion. This is so cute. I really wanted a piglet one, but they do have poo. Look at him. How much are these? They are, oh, I don't know, doesn't say. Oh, 44.99. I think they're all the same. They do have a Jack Skellington, who actually just looks like he's kind of face planted here. There he is. <laughs> that one's kind of strange. And now we're getting into the Christmas section. Looks like this is one of the Christmas Starbucks tumblers. These are really popular. They have them in all kinds of different colours. And now they have this one with a little candy cane on top on the straw. I'm guessing this one's going to be $49.99. Yes, it is. This water bottle is nice as well. That's $34.99. And this is one of the Christmas lounge fly bags. The tartan or plaid, if you're in the US, has kind of a velvet trim. $78 for that one. This actually was on sale on Shop Disney UK in the Black Friday sale, I noticed. That'll be over by the time you're watching this, though. This sweatshirt is nice. I have to say, though, it does feel kind of stiff. <laughs> it feels a bit not snuggly, I don't know. It doesn't feel like it'd be very comfortable. $69.99. And this is another set of Christmas ears. These ones actually light up. You've got the little lights there. You've got various different characters. Don't know how much these are. $39.99. They have a lady mug here. I think that one might be new. And they also have Jiminy. I'm not sure that one would be overly practical, but I do love it. I do love Jiminy Cricket. They also have this Mickey Hand mug. I don't think I've seen that one before. That's the other side. They also have the Gold 50th Tumbler for $20 as well. It was $49.99. I already have one of these, otherwise I would get that because $20 plus my annual pass discount is a very good price. And they have the matte black one too. I'm not so keen on that one. Oh, this guy. I love this cushion. They have this very thick, snuggly fleece. I would imagine they've shifted a few of these in the last week or so. This has been very cold here in Florida, but it's warmed right up now. They have a black one too that has buttons down the front. I kind of like this, actually. Ooh, look at this. An Ursula spirit jersey. I love that the writing is, like, iridescent. I love that. And then it's got the uh, usual on the front. And the classic black, this is my favourite, I love this one. Mine I've worn so much that this is starting to kind of crack, so at some point I will have to invest in a new one. I'm trying to hang on to it as long as I can. And if you're really cold, they do have a full-on big jacket here. This is $89.99. Okay, I'm just going to head across to the Main Street Confectionery because I've heard rumour of freeze-dried Skittles. I'm not sure what's going on there. It sounds very strange. Let's go take a look. There's some holiday themed treats here. Ah, this is it. So these are the freeze dried Skittles and they're on top of, I think this is a marshmallow actually. But yeah, I can't imagine freeze dried Skittles. What is kind of going on with that? I actually wanted to buy some separately, but I don't think you can do that. It's got to be done. I think I have to try this. And you can also get them on top of a crispy treat there too. And they're like crushed up on top of these apples. And I've been meaning to try the create your own popcorn here. I definitely will do that at some point on the trip. It looks delicious and my friend assures me that it's one of her favorite snacks now. I'll do that on one of my other visits to the Magic Kingdom. I'm right back at the main entrance now and I wanna show you this store that I didn't even know was there. I'm sure many people were well aware of its existence, but I was not until fairly recently, which I can't believe. And we're gonna be heading over here to the left to Town Square Theatre, which is where you go in to check in for Tony's Town Square. You also meet Mickey in here. And they do have some merchandise, but that's not the store that I'm actually talking about. So as we walk in here, you will see our great friend Mr. Toad to the right hand side and they do have some artwork and stuff here but this is not the merchandise I'm meaning okay we're gonna go all the way around here and you can see this sign that says embroidered and trimmed to order if we go down here and there is another door we have the ear store and this store pretty much has all of the different ears that you can get. They used to have the hat shop where the popcorn is that I just showed you in Main Street Confectionery. That used to be the hat store. So this is basically the replacement hat store. For the longest time, I never even knew that this store was here. 
And it's usually quieter in here than it is in the Emporium and places like that. So if you need ears, I would recommend coming here. I'm not sure if I've seen these before. It's kind of tropical pair. And they have these Star Wars Leia ears as well. I've not seen those before. They must be new. I just thought I would show you guys this store because you might be like me where you were totally in the dark about it and this is where you can come to get your ear hats embroidered as well and when you come out of here you're right by the exit and speaking of exiting I'm gonna do just that right now and head across to some of the resorts to take a look around I've got a reservation this evening at Wilderness Lodge so I don't know if I'll go straight there or maybe do another one first we'll see what happens I'm just gonna wander out and see where I end up but what an amazing morning I have had in the Magic Kingdom today. Seeing the Hatbox Ghost, what a highlight and an amazing surprise. I forgot actually that they said the end of November. I had my waffle sandwich, I had a lovely walk around, but it was very quiet when I first got here. So perfect Magic Kingdom morning and perfect first day. And there's no crowds or anything yet turning up for the party. It's a little bit early for that. I think people normally start turning up around four and it's a bit earlier. I had a very early start this morning, so I've actually had quite a lot of hours in the park. It is starting to get a little busier inside though. As I was walking around, I noticed that more and more people were coming in. So definitely the strategy of getting here early was good. I'll have lots more Magic Kingdom time this trip though. I have the party and several other days as well. I think I am gonna go across to Wilderness Lodge. I really wanna see their Christmas tree and their other decorations and they do have good coffee there too. I think I feel another one coming on. Maybe I can go to my reservation a little bit early, we'll see. Oh, you can hear the train behind me. And of course at some point I'll go across to the Grand Floridian to look at the gingerbread house and the Grand Floridian decorations are honestly something else so 100% we'll be going to look at that at some point. I love the theming of this resort so much. As soon as you come up from the boat dock and see the actual buildings with all of the trees and everything around it's just great. They do a great job with theming at Disney of all their different resorts. I'm gonna head straight into Roaring Fork. Last time I was here they had a coffee. I think it might have been called, I want to say a campfire coffee or something. That might be totally wrong. Let's see. At Wilderness Bark Latte, that was it. Nothing to do with campfires whatsoever. I'm seeing our first Christmas tree here, which is very cute. They've got like a little owl and a few little creatures in the tree to keep with the theming. And in there is Whispering Canyon. That's where I'm going to be going for dinner later. Oh, and they have kind of a Christmas pop-up shop here. A few merchandise things, and they also have some treats and things over there. And here is the big Wilderness Lodge tree. And that is a very big Christmas tree. Let's see if I can find a nice comfy chair. Where should we go? I think maybe here. Well, this is a pretty perfect spot right in front of the Christmas tree. There is a photographer here if anybody wants to come and get their picture taken in front of it. But I'm just gonna sit here and take in this beautiful tree and all the decorations you can see around the side. They have the kind of balconies decorated there as well. Just having a little wander. Just thought I'd show you the tree from the other side. The sun's on it at the moment, so it looks kind of really bright in the middle as if the lights have gone crazy, but they haven't. It's just the sun streaming in. So I'm just over at Whispering Canyon in a very dimly lit corner, so I'm not sure what the lighting's like here. I've just checked in early for my reservation and they said they should be able to seat me early, which is really, really good. It's not too busy at the moment, so I will be able to show you the restaurant. It's not going to be super loud or anything, but I can see some antics going on over there, which do happen at this restaurant, so hopefully we'll get to see some of that. But I'm kind of ready to eat now and I'd like to get back to the hotel a little bit earlier than planned, so it'd be nice if I can sit down early and uh, have this dinner. And and get back to do a bit of editing which I need to get done. Oh we're buzzing, it's time. I'm seated over here just by the railings that look out onto the main lobby. So just to show you what the restaurant looks like. Very in keeping with the Wilderness Lodge theme and this is my view to the other side. So perfect perfect dinner view I would say. Doesn't get much better. And here is the menu. So they do have a few starters. They've got burnt end nachos, salad, maple, chipotle barbecue, braised jackfruit dip, and that's vegan. Then they have several different skillets, traditional one, which has got different types of meats. Then they've got the pig, which is pork butter, the land and sea, where you have some salmon and stuff in that one, and then a plant-based version. I'm probably gonna go for the traditional. And all of them come with mashed potatoes, buttered corn, and green beans, as well as the meats. And I think you do get cornbread and coleslaw by the look of it as well. And there are a few entrees here, just in case you don't want the platter. They have a steak, a quinoa cake, which is vegan, and cedar plank salmon. 
Then they have drinks on the back. There's lots of alcoholic options, milkshakes, which are all you care to enjoy. I think I've had one of those many years ago and I really enjoyed it, but it just fills me up too much. So I'll probably stay away from that. Is it bad that I just really fancy a cup of tea? That is so British. I should also mention that the platters are $40 per person. And these platters are all you care to enjoy, the same as Ohana also is. So you can have more of any of these items that you want to. So Ohana is significantly more expensive. However, I will say Ohana does include the drinks, which it doesn't hear. So obviously that makes it a little bit more expensive. But yeah, if you want an all you care to enjoy kind of meal and you don't want to pay Ohana prices, this could be an option. But but remains to be seen how good the food is. We will see what happens when I get my platter. I am definitely gonna go for the traditional one. And you can hear some antics going on involving ketchup. If you hear people shouting that they need ketchup and you have it on your table, so I can actually see over there, people are mobilizing, ready to take all the ketchup and they're now walking it over to the other family who is shouting for it. So that's one of the things that you might have to do. And you usually end up with about 20 bottles of ketchup on the table. Things have started to arrive. So first up I have some cornbread with butter there. He's also bought some sauces. There's a mustard sauce and barbecue and also coleslaw. And he did say that all of this is all you care to enjoy. So you can have more of that if you want to. I probably will end up with more coleslaw. I'm a huge coleslaw fan. I just tried the cornbread. It's really good and the butter seems to have some kind of honey drizzle on it, I think. The thing that's kind of weird about cornbread though, if you're from the UK and this isn't really something that we have on any kind of regular basis, I'm not sure I've ever really had it in the UK. It honestly does taste like putting butter onto sponge cake, you know, like Victoria sponge cake. It's kind of sweet, which does feel a little bit weird to me. I have to say though, sponge cake, I like. Butter, I like. So putting butter on sponge cake, I can get on board with it. It actually tastes quite nice. I ended up going for a Fanta. One of the other kind of funny antics that I believe used to happen, if you had too many refills of your drink, they would then bring it out in this really massive giant jar. I don't know if that's still a thing anymore. We'll see if that happens to anybody, but I know it used to be. So I just tried the cornbread with the coleslaw. Ordinarily, the idea of eating sponge cake and coleslaw together would quite honestly be horrifying. It was actually really nice. So, I don't know, that seems like such a weird combination, but I enjoyed it, what can I say? So, the platter has arrived. Let me just get these tongs out of the way so you can see a bit better. This is the platter for one. If there's more of you, this will be a lot bigger, although this is kind of overwhelmingly big just for me. But they do just give you a little bit of each of the meats, and he said that if you want to order any more of anything, then you can. So, I'm sure for most people, you'll have something that's your favourite, so they don't want to give you tons of everything, because it might be that you mainly just eat the chicken or the beef or whatever. Then there is some corn in the middle there. Those mashed potatoes look really good. I am a huge fan of mashed potatoes, so I'm excited to get into the chicken and the mashed potatoes mostly. I'm trying the pulled pork first, and there's some mashed potatoes on top of it. It is underneath there, and I don't eat a lot of pulled pork, so let's see. That is nice, actually. Like I said, I don't eat pulled pork very often, but that is really good. Okay, I did have to get some more of this buttered corn. It is really, really delicious. The corn, the chicken, and the mashed potatoes, and it's so good. We're stretching. stretching was not easy with eating all that mashed potato and chicken. I had to do it. I don't have my kettle in the room this time because I don't have my owner's locker this trip. So I needed to get myself a hot tea. It's always so funny having lemon on it because that would just be the weirdest thing for me to put lemon in my tea. But I do have some milk, you'll be pleased to know. I know that putting lemon in tea is not weird in America, by the way. I know that can be fairly normal. But in the UK, that would be kind of weird in an English breakfast tea anyway. So while I'm here drinking my tea, I've just been thinking about my idea I was talking about earlier to ride People Mover 30 times in celebration of my 30th trip. I just worked it out. It would take me five hours. So five constant hours 
the riding around on the people mover. Now don't get me wrong, I would totally do that, but I don't think I've got that kind of time to do that on this trip, otherwise I would. But maybe one day I'll try that. My maximum at the moment that I've done is nine. I have done nine times around before, but 13, maybe a little bit excessive. Someone's playing happy birthday on a kazoo. I've got the check here and the total is 47.23 but that does include a 10% discount because I've got an annual pass. Okay, I am back in the room looking a little bit bedraggled at this point in the day. When you compare the early morning when I'm bright eyed and ready to go and now this, I've got wild hair, I've had ears on all day and just feeling a bit tired now. I think my flight yesterday and the tiredness is now catching up with me. I just wanted to do a quick debrief on dinner. So my conclusion, I really enjoyed it. I actually did like the food there. I think value for money overall, I would say that Whispering Canyon Cafe is a little better than Ohana purely because the price point is a lot cheaper. It's still all you can eat. So I think in general, it's probably better value for money. However, I still personally prefer Ohana just because I love the pot stickers and the noodles. The only reason I'm comparing them, by the way, is just because they're both all you care to enjoy, as they call it. Um, so yeah, it was good. It was good value for money, I thought, actually. I am so full now, though. I did try some of the other meats, and it's really hard for me to give an opinion. I didn't enjoy them that much, but it's because they're not my preferred type of meat. So like ribs and brisket and stuff, I don't really like that much. I like the pulled pork and the chicken, though. The mashed potatoes and the corn with the chicken was so good. And and as you saw, there were some antics going on. I was hoping to see people riding around on stick horses. I have seen that from a distance before, as long as it's not me that has to do it. Crucial point there, but I would have enjoyed watching it, but that didn't happen while I was there. And I didn't see anyone in the giant hat either, um, but it is quite a fun restaurant. And if you like that kind of thing, I saw quite a few times where people were shouting for ketchup and all the kids really enjoyed taking the ketchup from table to table. So it is a fun restaurant and a fun experience. I really enjoyed my day today I think because I saw the hat box ghost so early in the day it just really started the day on a high and it was just nice walking around in the cooler weather I do very much like it when it's a bit cooler it's just so much easier to walk around I don't need to take as many breaks and stuff like that um, but yeah really loved it and lots more Magic Kingdom to come later in the trip I'm gonna wrap this one up for now I'm guessing this vlog will be fairly long because it's gonna be joined with the travel day so I hope you guys have enjoyed this if you have please do give it a thumbs up that helps other people to find it when they're looking for Disney vlogs and it also really helps to subscribe as well so if you're not already subscribed please do tap the subscribe button and the bell icon and then you'll always be notified when a new vlog goes up I met so many of you guys today in the Magic Kingdom as well as yesterday on my travel day so a huge thank you to all of you who came up to say hello I love having a chat with you guys tomorrow I'm off to Epcot which is my favorite park I always love an Epcot day and I'm gonna be eating in a new restaurant in the World Showcase that I've never tried before so it's gonna be a new experience for me as well as here on the vlogs hopefully I'll be able to get a Guardian's return time just do some general Epcot wandering and then when I'm back in a few days at Epcot again it's gonna be the opening of the new gardens and the waltz statue and also the fireworks that evening as well so there'll be lots of new stuff coming in the next Epcot day after tomorrow. Thank you guys so much as always for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I hope you're all well and I'll see you in the next one next Saturday. Bye! Oh someone else is here now. Yeah, this definitely works better with more people.